Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Sheik, Jazim and Sir Jim Ratcliffe make final bids for Manchester United. Sheik Jazim has submitted a world record bid of five billion. Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid values higher than Sheik Jazim. Now the Glazers are demanding six billion for Manchester United. In November last year, the Glazers announced that the club was up for sale and since then there has been a lot of interest. The Glazers have been one of the biggest issues at the club for such a long time and that explains why for such a long time United fans have been protesting against the Glazers. The Glazers have owned Manchester United for 18 years. They purchased the club for around £790 million back in 2005. So that's the news on that. Uh, just a bit of news on Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood has told his friends he will never play for Manchester United again. Don't forget, a while ago, Mason Greenwood uh, did get charged with attempted rape, controlling behaviour. and something else as well obviously in the end mason greenwood got off with it uh, so that's the news on that um as you all know manchester united do play at aston villa today at old trafford uh, some news on ganacho uh, ganacho has now recovered from injury so could be in contention to play in today's game. Ganacho recently signed a new five-year contract that will extend his stay at the club until 2028. Ganacho made his senior debut last season. Man United got him from Atletico Madrid's academy back in 2020. Uh, we've still got players missing, as you all know, Van der Beek is out for the rest of the season but don't start anyway because he's a squad player, he'll be one of the players leaving the club in the summer, as you all know Ten Hag is preparing a summer clear out, uh, Varane's still injured, Martinez is out for the rest of the season with a fractured foot. Uh, but Tomine's been out of a knock. Uh, Tom Eaton is still out. <laughs> uh, this will be a tough game for Man United today. You know, Aston Villa have been very good this season. Uh, the Aston Villa manager is Unai Emery. He's been the Villa manager for around, is it six or seven months now? He got appointed in as the Villa manager in November of last year. Unai Emery has got a pretty decent pedigree behind him. Um, you know, he's managed a lot of clubs. You know, he managed Villarreal, won Europa Leagues with them. Managed Sevilla, I do recall him winning some Europa Leagues with them. Managed PSG, you know, he won trophies at PSG. Uh, managed Arsenal, you know, he's proven in the Premier League, because obviously before I became Villa manager, managing the Premier League before with Arsenal, managed Sparta, Moscow, Almeria, Valencia, and at one point he managed Loco Deportivo. 
Unai Emery was the one that replaced Steven Gerrard because don't forget Aston Villa sacked Steven Gerrard. At one point, Aston Villa had Dean Smith. You know, they decided to sack him when he got sacked from Villa. He went to become the Norwich City manager. Uh, the players Aston Villa have got, you know, they've got some good players in there. You know, they've got Leon Bailey, who's really made an impact. Aston Villa got him from by Leverkusen. He's out with injury at the moment. Bertrand Traore, Ollie Watkins, he's a former Brentford player. Uh, Douglas Louise. Um, I'd say he's an average player. Uh, John McGinn is a very good midfielder. He's one of the best players that Villa have got. Philip Coutinho, he's really made an impact at Villa. Um, he's been out with injury. Uh, um, obviously, before Coutinho had two loan spells at Bayern Munich. He was at Barcelona, he was very poor with them. He obviously played for Liverpool. He enjoyed like five and a half years with Liverpool and was very good. And before, he played for Inter Milan. Uh, Matty Cash, you know, he's a defender. He's out with injury at the moment. Bubakar Kamara, Villa got him from Marseille. He's been out with injury. Diego Carlos, uh, Villa got him from Sevilla. Uh, Callum Chambers, I think Villa got him from Arsenal. Lucas Ding, uh, Villa got him from Everton. He's a fullback. Ezri Konsa. Ashley Young, um, he's a former Man United player, you know, if Young plays in this game today, he'll be reuniting with Man United, Young was a long-serving player at Man United, he enjoyed like eight and a half years at the club, uh, Young is now in his second spell at Aston Villa. Uh, the goalkeepers Aston Villa have got, they've got Jed Steer, he's been out with injury. Emmanuel Martinez. And they've got two other goalkeepers as well. Uh, Villa have lost some players, you know, don't forget they lost Amwa Al Ghazi. They did lose to Anzebe, you know, don't forget he was on loan at Villa from Man United to Anzebe and John like three loan spells with Aston Villa. So there you go. This will be the third time Man United will be playing Aston Villa this season. Man United have played them twice already this season. Uh, Man United did lose at Villa Park in the league early on in the season 3-1. It was the first time Villa had beaten Man United at Villa Park since, like, what, 1995? Uh, Man United did beat Villa in the Carabao Cup for two. Uh, Villa, of course, won their last game against Fulham 1-0. Uh, Man United are coming into this game on the back of a 2-2 draw with Tottenham at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, Man United threw away a two-goal lead. You know, Man United were very dominant in that first half against Tottenham. We started the second half well as well, and then after that we took the foot off the gas. Uh, Man United's goals against Tottenham came from Jadon Sancho and Marcus Rashford. Tottenham's goals came from Pedro Porro and Hyun Min Son scored the equaliser. After the game against Tottenham, you know, Eric Tenag came out and said his team has the worst schedule this season. 
and he was fuming at his Man United players after letting Tottenham off the hook. But it was disappointing, it was two points dropped. But, despite that draw, I'm still convinced Man United are going to finish in the top four this season. Um, it's between Man United and Newcastle for third place. Um, as you all know, my perceptions have not changed on Ten Hag. I still believe he's the right manager for Man United. Um, even though we've had quite a few setbacks under him this season, but we have recovered from them mostly. Like Ten Hag said the other week, that Man United do seem to bounce back well. From setbacks. You can see the progress Ten Hag has made in his first season as United manager. Won the Carabao Cup. That was his first trophy as United manager. Man United's first trophy in six years. You know, he's got us to the FA Cup final where we'll be playing Man City. You know, it's the first ever Man United Man City FA Cup final, by the way. He got us to the Europa League quarter finals. And, you know, we're in the top four in the league. So, if Ten Hag can win the FA Cup, get as a top four, top three finished, I'd underline that and say that's a successful season. Then build from that. Ten Hag is over a year now into his reign as Man United manager. He's under contract with the club until 2025. Ten Hag was the one that replaced Ralph Rangnick. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless.